If you've ever heard the phrase, the stories a stadium could tell, Marcus and Park could write a book. From championship teams, to floods, to a pair of amateur teams that share the park, and just about everything in between, Marcus and has its share of memories. The park dates back to 1948, and the tradition of baseball in Austin and the surrounding area soon followed and flourished. To this day, Marcus and Park houses the longest running Legion sponsored baseball team in the country. And as a coach with deep Austin roots, Andy Swank acknowledges the park standing in Austin. I, I grew up in Austin, so I've spent an awful lot of time down at this park, and it, it's absolutely amazing. Just the atmosphere of it, the, the looks of it, and, and the work that's been put into it over the last five, ten years. It's really, really one of the nicest parks around, and um, it, it's cool to have that opportunity. I think some of the kids maybe take it a little for granted. They don't quite understand the history of it and the work that's gone into it. But um, there's a lot of guys that have put in a ton of work to this park, and, and it, it looks really good because of it. But any park that has been around that long is not without its troubled past. Remember the stories a stadium could tell? Well, there were almost a lot less to tell. Marcus and Park nearly ceased to exist around the start of the 21st century, but Joe Serratore led the charge to keep the historical park from being just that, history. We had to book dates with the city, with the Park and Rec Department, uh, until we took over in 2004. Until Riverland was made, then they were going to not use this park anymore, knock it down, and a group of us got together, created a board, went to the city council and got, and we're able to lease it for a dollar a year. And we've been doing that for, since 04. Ron Ripley and John Morrison did most of the work regarding that. Saratori is known for starting amateur baseball in Austin in 1990 and keeping it alive in the coming years, now for just a dollar a year. Just goes to show anything that's been around that long is going to have its ebbs and flows. At times it's been the relationship with the city, other times literal flows have been the issue. The park has been a victim of multiple floodings most recently in 2016, and it takes manpower to get the field back to the right playing conditions. But Markison has also gotten its recent upgrades in the dugouts and new lights around the park. But as Greyhounds manager Matt Cano says, there's still plenty more on the wish list. Well, there's some on-field projects that, that could be enhanced. Um, you know, the outfield fence has always been an issue since uh, a few floodings. The fence isn't actually done properly. It pops up from time to time in the frost. The ball rolls under. Um, you know, in the grandstand for safety issues, you know, we could extend some of the screening uh, along the sides just uh, just for the fans. But uh, you know, we do the best we can with what we have, and you know, five thousand dollars would go a long way uh, because uh, we can stretch the dollar here in town working with some of the. Uh, some of our construction people, and uh, you know they're they're willing to donate, so it's always uh, it's always good to yeah to, to work with the community in that way. After all, the park keeps more than local teams in Austin. One of amateur baseball's great stamps in all of Southern Minnesota is the annual Spam Town Challenge, right in our own backyard here in Spam Town, USA. The annual tournament dates back to 2005 and brings teams from all around Minnesota and the Midwest, with the goal of highlighting baseball in Austin and the city as a whole. Teams have come from Wisconsin, Illinois, the Dakotas, and as far as New York. The hope is for Marcus and Park to host more big events, keep revamping the park, and to keep baseball alive in Austin. Sam Hauser, AM 1480K, U.S., Austin, Minnesota.